Tonight, Melbourne celebrates Freedom Friday. Families reunited in their homes at last. The Premier promises Victoria there will be no more state or city-wide lockdowns. Suburbs back in business, hairdressers, beauticians, bars and restaurants all swamped. Victorians cleared for takeoff, quarantine scrapped, international flights fast-tracked. Film star Alec Baldwin in a deadly shooting, accidentally killing a woman on a movie set. And a Melbourne couple's horror year ends with a $60 million Powerball jackpot. Live from Melbourne, 7 News with Peter Mitchell starts now. Good evening. It's been a day of celebration as Melbournians take our first steps to freedom. The end of the hard lockdown comes with even more good news. We're on track to hit the 80% double dose target early, possibly next week. And the Premier is promising we've seen the last of state and citywide shutdowns. Woo, 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 woo. Melbourne at midnight. Woo! The city alive again. From the homes we've been locked down in for 262 days, roared the sounds of freedom. The party siren returned to Chapel Street. Queues formed outside city bars and restaurants. Two, one, two. Where early morning drinks were acceptable. Here's two. Melbourne and Victoria. Yes. Even for the Premier and his wife Kath, who joined a mother's group for a brunch meeting with babies who've only known life in a pandemic. He's got a clear strategy though. <laughs> yes. It's just so nice to be with other people and cuddle babies. Victorians have endured six stay at home orders that transformed our city from the world's most livable to the most locked down. Daniel Andrews promises that was the last time. But again, we're not having statewide lockdowns, we're not having citywide lockdowns because people have gone and done what we asked them to do. The cobwebs have been dusted off businesses that have laid dormant for more than two months. Finally, the chatter and clippers are buzzing again. Traffic was one of the first things to revert back to a COVID normal. The 25 kilometre travel limit scrapped. There were long delays as motorists hit the road headed for the Mornington Peninsula. After months apart, families and friends finally reunited in their homes. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. He said, so not to a park, not to the beach. And we said, no, you could actually go to your friend Joe's house. Long lost little mates came bolting through the door. Here he is. Hello. To all of those who are down there in Victoria today, enjoy the day. Um, it's going to be tremendous uh, being reunited again and doing all the things you've been looking forward to doing. You've worked so hard for that. But freedom comes on a day of more than 2,000 local cases and a record 16 Victorians have died with COVID. And as Melbournians celebrate getting out Yay. and getting together, healthcare workers are holding their breath. There are currently 784 COVID patients in hospital, 145 in ICU, 94 of them are on a ventilator. We've got school going back, but we've got, you know, 20,000 plus active cases. So we have to bear that in mind as we step carefully through everything. The state is expected to reach our 80% fully vaccinated target by next weekend. The Premier says he'll make an announcement in the coming days if restrictions can ease even further than those outlined in the roadmap, meaning hope for those businesses who felt left behind. Give small business certainty. Stop moving the goalposts. There is a long way to go. We need to punch through those thresholds. We absolutely can and should punch through that 90% fully vaxxed threshold. Marking the end of one of the darkest periods in the state's history with a new beginning, one Baldwin couple had their hearts set on the 21st of October, tying the knot in the first seconds of freedom at 11.59pm in their backyard. What a way to end lockdown. Yeah, getting married, yes. In one minute, yeah, one minute wedding, yeah. Jade Vincent, 7 News. Melbourne's restaurants, cafes and bars are working overtime as the city enjoys its first night out in months. Sonia Marinelli is in the thick of it at Ligon Street and Sonia, our famous hospitality is back on the menu. 
Oh, isn't it wonderful, Mitch? After 77 long days, Melbourne's food scene is finally back and it looks like we're not taking it for granted. The Fork Booking app says pre-COVID, the average wait time to secure a table was around four days. Now you need to book 17 days in advance. And for those who did get in early today, well, Mitch, it was certainly worth the wait. If last night felt like Christmas, today was New Year's. Cheers to freedom! A new dawn for Melbourne's hospitality industry, starting with breakfast at the pub. We got here at seven, a uh, nice time to order a champagne. <laughs> Everyone's uh, overjoyed today, it's been too long. Diners basked in the warmth of the welcome sunshine in St Kilda with table service for the first time in 77 days, something pre-COVID many took for granted. It's nice to have food that we didn't prepare ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> for restaurant owner Jim Paraskevis, Freedom Day couldn't have come soon enough. We got out from 6 o'clock in the morning and couldn't wait to get to work there. Yeah, Jim, Jim. <laughs> Jim, Jim. <laughs> At restaurants across the city, the drinks were flowing, the food plentiful. <laughs> a lot. I can't make a margarita like this at home, I tell you what, as much as I tried. Prince executive chef Dan Cooper plating up his signature dishes the way they were intended. We're all super excited to be back, you know, the sights and sounds of a kitchen and crockery and cutlery banging and clanging. Um, yeah, we're pretty happy to be back. Cheers! There were fears policing vaccine passports would prove a headache, but hours into the new requirements all appear to be running smoothly. I think we might see some challenges on the weekend, but so far so good. Allowing double vax diners to relax and lap up the hospitality. But it is bittersweet when you consider an establishment as large as this one can accommodate up to 700 diners. Instead, limited to just 20 indoors, and 50 outdoors. It's been very difficult, but the fact that we can open our doors is just, you know, something that we're happy to have at the moment, regardless of restrictions. Oh, it's super exciting. We've been cooped up at home for such a long time. It's just good to be back out with friends, you know, out with your loved ones. <laughs> exciting too to see Melbourne's famous food scene once again come roaring back to life. Chin, chin. Chin, chin. Sonny Marinelli, Seven News. Yes, the city certainly is roaring back to life tonight with a new push to make sure it stays that way. Jackie Felgate joins us now from the city. And Jackie, the focus is now on mask rules. It certainly is, Mitch. Places like here at Bomber Bar are looking forward to a very big night indeed, but the attention really now turns to that 80% double dose mark. That'll mean venues like this one going from having 20 patrons inside to 150 subject to density limits and 500 outdoors. And the Lord Mayor, Sally Cap, is now calling on the state government to scrap that mask mandate for office workers to get the city back up and running. We're really asking the Premier and the State Government to consider at that 80% threshold no masks, particularly if you're sitting at your desk, and that'll make a big difference to people coming back to the city. So Mitch, a fun night ahead for these people, but the city a very long way from what it once was. Jackie Felgate, thank you. Hairdressers set up on footpaths to help meet the huge demand for a cut after lockdown. Tegan Doling is in Ascot Vale this evening. Tegan, quite extraordinary scenes at beauticians and salons across Melbourne. Mitch, the lines really had to be seen to be believed today. These ladies here at Lash Envy have been lucky enough to jag an appointment this evening and they are getting their eyelashes redone. It seems that today's first day of freedom, many Melburnians were spending it doing a little bit of maintenance, others were getting some pampering. No matter what suburb or what time of day, the queues were long, just like the hair in need of a trim. 20 or 30 clients, a uh, huge amount of people. A bit of a queue here today, probably about 30 deep at the moment, so hopefully it's uh, three hours and we're all done. With their COVID certificates at the ready, the urgency of post-COVID maintenance was real. The girls won't like me looking like this. <laughs> if I don't get rid of it today, I'm gonna, it's going to get in my, in my eyes at work. But once inside, the wait well and truly worth it. I've been trying to keep the beard trim, but I have no idea what to do on top, so it's good to be back in Ben's safe hands. After 11 weeks of missed appointments, 
Hairdressers yeah. also in hot demand. Nothing better than to, to make a client over and they leave on the top of the world. You know, that's a job well done. With a five client limit inside, some businesses took up the Premier's offer to expand their salon curbside. And even tried cutting two at a time. Oh my God, so desperate. I've worn my hair curly the whole time over lockdown. For many, the first day of freedom was about pampering. Oh my God, so excited. <laughs> it had yeah. to be done this <laughs> it time. <did>. This time. <laughs> From the hands. I haven't had my nails done for so long, it feels great. The pandemic's over and it's going to be the summer of nails. To the face. I opened this place end of April and it's been closed more than open. And the body. Being in lockdown for so long, it was the first thing on my list. No one's had a trip to Europe, so this is all they've really got to, to get that tan and to feel um, happy. Much deserved TLC after months of DIY at home. It's got to be a bit of a marathon, that's for sure. Tegan Dolling, 7 News. It has been a bittersweet day for retailers, allowed to open again but not inside. Instead, they've been forced onto footpaths to make much-needed post-lockdown sales. After almost 80 days of click and collect, retailers are ready to relaunch. We're back! But it's baby steps on the footpath, trading only allowed outdoors. Most of the children can try the clothes over what they're wearing. If they take it home and it doesn't fit, we'll look after them. A street market vibe with tables and racks of clothes as shopkeepers try a new way to trade. Shoes on the shopping list. We've got the walkie-talkies, so we're communicating and grabbing them from out the back and bringing them all out here. Even jewellery was an option. Traders thinking creatively about how to avoid theft. Look, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be pretty, pretty um, time consuming. But I'm just going to sit them down, ask them what they'd like to try, fill a tray up inside and bring it out so they can try it on. Big shopping centres and department stores stayed closed, but big items are still available. All this will be taken out and brought back in each day. Some fridges, furniture, washing machines, uh, vacuum cleaners, just a bit of everything so they've got a small sample. If we don't have it out here, we go inside. If we can, we bring it outside for the customers. But for many small boutique operators, it's too hard or simply not possible. We can have 30 in a restaurant, five in a hairdresser, unmasked while they eat at the cafes. But I can't have one person at a time in my store, so we just need to open. In Sydney, this store would be open at one per four square metres density. Why on earth isn't it open in Melbourne? The footpath won't remain the showroom for long. We are projected to hit 80% in just over a week and then retailers can invite customers back inside. Oh, we're fighters. We're not going anywhere. Paul Dowsley, 7 News. And the post-lockdown rush out of the city is well underway this evening. These are live pictures from our news helicopter hovering over the Monash Freeway at, as it approaches Eastlink. Road works are causing heavy traffic for people who've hit the road, many heading to the Mornington Peninsula for the weekend. Melbournians are still banned from travelling to regional Victoria. Victorians will be able to fly to international destinations including London, Singapore and Hong Kong next month. Major airlines are selling tickets after a decision to scrap the state's hotel quarantine program for the fully vaccinated. For our desperately quiet airport, the first move to return it to its bustling former self. Quarantine free travel from November 1st. If you are double vaxxed and if you've been tested before and you agree to test within 24 hours, then you will be able to go home. No hotel quarantine, no ISO. The unvaccinated still must hotel quarantine, capped at 250 a time. But it's hoped this removes the main disincentive to travel overseas. So this is a freedom of movement we've not been able to enjoy for a long time. New South Wales already flagged an end to hotel quarantine last week. So today, Qantas announced it's bringing forward flights between Sydney and five destinations and introducing new services between Sydney and Delhi. New South Wales has moved first. They get as much capacity as we can put in. 
Moving second, just two destinations brought forward for us. Melbourne, London to 6th November, six weeks early. Melbourne, Singapore, three weeks early to November 22. I do think Melbourne deserves a good uh, amount of Qantas's attention as we go forward. We'd love them to share the love that they're showing to Sydney, to Melbourne as well. Initially, international flights are only for Australians and their families. But the Prime Minister hopes by the end of the year we'll welcome back international tourists here. The Premier agrees but insists they will all have to be double vaccinated. It's been bloody hard to get to this point. Now we just have to safeguard it. Confirmation today, Victorian tourists can travel to Sydney from November 1st and to Tasmania from December 15th. So bizarrely, we can fly to London before we can fly to Launceston. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Victoria will fight to keep the Formula One Grand Prix. The New South Wales Premier has confirmed his state's interest. I think a Formula One in Sydney uh, would be extraordinary. It would be great for our state. Last time I looked, it was going to be run across the Sydney Harbour Bridge and that was like two days before we signed a 10-year deal. We don't take anything for granted, but the Grand Prix is here to stay. The contract to stage the race at Albert Park expires in 2025. Star actor Alec Baldwin is at the centre of a fatal shooting on a movie set. It's understood Baldwin fired a prop gun, killing the cinematographer and wounding the director. On the set of a Hollywood western, a real-life deadly shooting, a prop gun fired by 68-year-old movie star Alec Baldwin, using the weapon on the set of his new film, Rust. The female victim named as 42-year-old director of photography Helena Hutchins, who just days ago posted an Instagram video riding a horse in the New Mexico desert, saying one of the perks of shooting a western is you get to ride horses on your day off. Santa Fe County Sheriff's race to the Bonanza Creek Ranch film set following a 911 one call. Later reporting two people were shot when a prop firearm was discharged by Alec Baldwin, 68, producer and actor. The victims identified as Hutchins and a 48-year-old director, Joel Souza. Ms Hutchins was flown by helicopter to University of New Mexico Hospital, pronounced dead on arrival. Mr Souza was taken by ambulance for emergency treatment. The Cinematographers Guild issuing a statement, we support a full investigation into this tragic event. This is a terrible loss. The movie Rust is about a teenager sentenced to hang for an accidental killing. Baldwin plays the boy's grandfather, earlier posting in a blood-stained shirt saying back at the office, blimey, it's exhausting. Baldwin is a father of six, famed for his roles in 30 Rock and his Donald Trump impersonation. The tragedy echoes the 1993 death of Bruce Lee's son on the set of The Crow. Brandon Lee was fatally wounded when a blank cartridge fired a bullet stuck in the gun's barrel. Though exactly what happened in this case is yet to be determined. And Ashley Mullaney joins us now from Los Angeles. Ashley, any word on if and when any charges will be laid? Well, it is still an if, Peter, and that's because police are still working to determine whether there are any grounds for criminal charges or whether to rule this an accident. One key piece of detail is police confirming the shooting did happen while the cast was either rehearsing uh, or filming a scene. Now, if criminal charges are not laid, there is every possibility the victim's family may launch uh, civil action against either Alec Baldwin or the production company. Peter? Ashley Mullaney in Los Angeles, thank you. Back home, it's been a day of high drama ahead of tomorrow's Cox Plate. Tim Watson, a genuine contender, has been controversially scratched. Mitch, it's left one of Melbourne's top trainers fuming. Kieran Ma was at complete odds with racing officials who left his back-to-back -back Cox Plate dreams in tatters. We'll cross live to the Valley for all the fallout soon. Plus, why Joel Selwood won't be handing the captaincy reins over just yet as a dog's cult hero reveals the reasons behind his shock retirement. And Mitch, buckle up, because the Ben Simmons saga could drag on for as long as four years. All those details coming up in court. Four years. Thank you, Tim.
Freedom Day has extra meaning for a South Melbourne couple waking up to a $60 million Powerball win after a horror year. The details are next. Also, also schools shut down by a tense police operation in Nunawading. The massive task facing WA police in the search for little Cleo. The Queen sent to hospital in a new scare. We'll have the latest live from London. And later, zero interest credit cards put to the test. Schools went into lockdown briefly today after reports of a man with a weapon in Melbourne's east. Heavily armed police surrounded a Nunawadding home this morning to negotiate with the man. Police say there was no threat to the wider community. It has been almost a week since little Cleo vanished, presumed abducted from her family's tent in remote Western Australia. Now her best friend is making a public plea to help find her. This is a picture of Naya and her best friend. She's hoping one of you will recognise her. Her name is Cleo Smith and she's been missing for almost a week. Well, I still miss her and I think I reckon she got took that from the tent. Detectives also increasingly believe four-year-old Cleo was taken from her family's tent in Outback WA, abducted last Saturday. Detectives today took evidence to Perth for analysis, gathered from the campsite where Cleo disappeared. As the ground search there winds down, reinforcements on the runway, the criminal investigation ramping up, the search spreading nationwide. I still miss her because she's lost and I want her to come back. Just a few hours ago, police removed the roadblock, opening up the campsite they believe Cleo was abducted from on Saturday. These shacks have been at the centre of their search, but almost a week on, there's still no sign of the four-year-old. Joey Catanzaro, 7 News. Overseas, the Queen has spent a night in hospital, sparking new health fears. Sarah Greenaltz joins us now from London. And Sarah, how unwell is Her Majesty? Well, the good news, Peter, is that she is well enough to be back at Windsor Castle. The Queen spent one night at a private hospital here in central London before heading home overnight your time. Now, we were told that she needed to rest after working too hard. Doctors' orders that were perhaps expected for a 95-year-old Queen uh, who is not too far off celebrating 70 years on the throne and just six months after the death of Prince Philip. But still, news of a hospital stay did come as a shock. The palace, though, is telling everyone not to worry. A statement reads, following medical advice to rest for a few days, the Queen attended hospital on Wednesday afternoon for some preliminary investigations, returning to Windsor Castle at lunchtime today and remains in good spirits. Royal Insiders too are reiterating that message not to worry. That is confirmed by the British papers here today with just one tabloid featuring the hospital stay. This week, Her Majesty had to cancel a trip to Northern Ireland, although at this stage she does plan on attending the Glasgow Climate Conference in the next fortnight. Peter? Sarah Greenolch in London. Thank you. A South Melbourne couple has declared they'll retire and help out the children after winning Powerball's $60 million jackpot. They watch their numbers being drawn live on TV in utter disbelief. It's what everyone dreams of. <laughs> But for one lucky couple from South Melbourne, it's reality. Taking out the entire $60 million Division One prize in last night's Powerball. I wish them all the best. The winning tickets sold here at South Melbourne's Market Lotto and News. It feels, I can't describe it with, with words. It's, it's, it's amazing, amazing. They said they were so blown away. They could not stop screaming and crying. Customers lined up all day, hoping it was them who'd won big. Many settling for a lot less. $20 and 90 cents. Woohoo! <laughs> Close! Oh, it was better than, than the kick in the teeth, I suppose. Well, I didn't win. For the lucky ticket holders, waking up Melbourne's newest multi-millionaires made today's newfound freedoms even sweeter. Sounds like a script from a movie. 
you know. I'm actually happy for them, especially on you know Freedom Friday. This means two Victorians have now had life-changing lottery wins during lockdown six. A North Melbourne father won $80 million in August, not long after losing his job because of the pandemic. The couple has plenty of plans for their winnings after what they describe as a horrible year. For today, they say they'll start spending it on flowers, coffee and chocolate. Sarah Jones, 7 News. Jane Bunn joins us now. And Jane, it was a beautiful day for our first day out. <laughs> Rich, what a way to take our first steps of freedom. At midnight, it was still up on 19 degrees. Then we reached the high 20s today with lots of sunshine this morning. But the warmth doesn't last. There is a change moving through. The afternoon cloud was a heads up that it was on its way. We reached a top of 27 in the city, warm and even muggy. But it is now more than 10 degrees colder. It's now down to 16 out there. Now there is wet weather too. The full details are after sport, Mitch. OK, Jane, we'll see you then. Thank you. There are new rules for real estate this weekend. Next, on-site auctions are back on, but not everybody's ready. Also, the true cost of the Westgate tunnel blowouts. A driver killed in a horror bus crash. And how to enjoy a wine without the hangover. Pfizer has released early data showing its booster shots restore protection against COVID to more than 95%. A third dose was given to 10,000 participants, showing those with an extra dose were at a much lower risk of contracting the virus. The pharmaceutical company says at this stage, getting a booster dose 11 months after the second jab could provide the best protection. The Premier insists the new quarantine facility in Melbourne's north won't be a white elephant. From January, the Mickleham site will house unvaccinated international arrivals, allowing Victoria to shut down hotel quarantine entirely. We will have people who are not vaccinated uh, and, it's, and it's much safer to have them there than have them in a hotel. The complex will also be used as emergency accommodation for natural disasters and future pandemics. Auctions are back on site this weekend, but with restrictions. The new rules are expected to further fuel Melbourne's booming market, although for some auctioneers it's easier to stay online for now. Auctioneer Jeremy Tyrrell has become so used to selling homes from his bedroom, it's easier to stay online this weekend, despite being able to sell houses under the hammer on site. Yeah, although we can do on site auctions from now or from this weekend, we've decided to take baby steps, and the main reason behind that is that there are still some restrictions. This weekend, we'll see 1,480 auctions across Melbourne. The new rules, only 50 fully vaccinated people are allowed and only outside. And inspections is still one-on-one -on -one for now. For the time being, we can bring everybody into the online space and it doesn't matter if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. It doesn't discriminate. If we hit 80% double vaccinated as projected next week, then more changes to auctions and inspections could come in before October 30. We want to get back on site, um, but we need some clear guidelines and, and how to operate safely. And the experts say selling online hasn't and won't affect results. We're just staggered how far buyers are pushing themselves to, to secure homes. Georgia Commons solely, 7 News. The company building the troubled Westgate Tunnel has revealed it's lost almost $450 million in tolls due to construction delays. Transurban confirmed the loss to a meeting of investors. Tunnelling on the project stopped in 2019 after concerns over contaminated soil. Transurban's now at loggerheads with the state government over the total cost of the delay. A driver has died after his car collided with a bus in Sydney. Ten passengers were on board the bus when the crash occurred. Police now need their help to work out exactly what happened. It's devastating. Someone has lost their life today and um, we'll be investigating to work out why that's occurred. The bus driver was taken away for mandatory drug and alcohol testing. 
The FBI says human remains found in a Florida park are those of Brian Laundrie. Dental records confirm the partial skull uncovered yesterday belonged to the 23-year-old. He was the main suspect in the murder of his girlfriend, Gabby Petito. Winemaking is big business, but one of our leading producers is hoping to capitalise on drinkers who want to avoid a hangover. Wolf Blass has launched its own line of non-alcoholic wine as more and more of us look to cut our alcohol intake. It's got the fizz, but without the booze. Australian-owned Wolf Blass is promising drinkers no more hangovers. Something that delivers the flavours of traditional wine, but without the influence of alcohol. It's launched a Sav Blanc, a Shiraz and a Sparkling. They look the part and claim to taste as close as you'll get to the real thing. People traditionally have enjoyed wine and they still do, but there's a new segment where people are looking for better lifestyle decisions. Recent figures show 48% of Australians actively moderate their alcohol intake and 65% want to try no or low alcohol brands. So you've got to like it. Consumers need to like the taste and that's what we've, um, we've really put the hard yards into now. With the alcohol-free trend taking off, major suppliers are cashing in. Stores like Dan Murphy's now have entire sections dedicated to the drinks. More consumers focusing on their health. The $30 million industry is set to soar, expected to be worth over $250 million annually within five years. There's a real health consciousness amongst people. And it's not just no alcohol, but reduced alcohol then they see that that's better for them. Miley Hogan, 7 News. Victoria's politicians are copping a backlash in a tax costing taxpayers thousands. Details are next. Also how Victoria has turned to drugs in lockdown and zero interest credit put to the test. Vandals are targeting officers of state politicians. A masked vandal was caught in the act gluing abusive signs to Fiona Patton's office. The Reason Party leader says she won't let extremists stop her from doing her job. I have no doubt that it was probably came from some of those anti-vaccination groups, those so-called freedom fighters. And the Werribee office of State Treasurer Tim Pallas was also targeted. The police officer who shot and killed Australian woman Justine Ruschek damond will be released from prison as early as next year. His sentence has been dramatically cut and today Mohammed Noor was forgiven by Justine's fiancé. He's the cop who claimed an unarmed Australian woman so startled him four years ago he shot her dead. I'm deeply sorry for the pain that I've caused that family. The 40-year-old phoned police to check on an unexplained noise in the couple's Minneapolis neighbourhood. Minutes later, as she approached the police car, Mohammed Noor fired the lethal shot. Today, via video call... And I have no doubt she would have forgiven you, Mohammed. Justine's fiancé spoke to her killer. I want you to know that I forgive you, Mohammed. All I ask is that you use this experience to do good for other people. I'm deeply grateful for Mr. Damon's forgiveness. Minnesota's highest court threw out his murder conviction and 12 and a half year jail term, today sentenced for manslaughter. I hereby sentence you to the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of 57 months. Justine's killing here is no longer judged a murder and the officer who fired the fatal shot will likely be out on parole mid next year. In Minneapolis, Tim Lester, 7 News. Lockdowns haven't stopped a rising number of Australians from using cocaine. 80% of regular drug users admit taking cocaine, up from 68% last year. Ecstasy use fell, mostly because festivals and nightclubs were off limits. But other drugs like e-cigarettes and ketamine rose. The data was compiled by the National Drug and Alcohol Research Centre. 
A surge in popularity of buy now, pay later services like Afterpay has seen many young Victorians avoid the traditional credit card. But the banks are still trying to entice new customers by offering interest-free cards. For decades, credit cards have been a staple of the shopping experience, but that's quickly changing. Young Australians are rightly scared of those traditional credit cards with huge uh, credit limits and eye-watering interest rates. As more shoppers choose to buy now and pay later. We're seeing a three times growth across all payment methods for Afterpay. The number of active credit card accounts has fallen to its lowest in nearly 15 years. The banks were really asleep at the wheel. They were not phased by the emergence of the buy now, pay later market. But the big banks are fighting back. This week, Westpac launched its interest-free credit card. All three offer 0% interest in exchange for a monthly fee that can be waived if you pay on time. There is a catch. The credit limits are low. But there are no late fees, unlike the buy now, pay later scheme. Can't beat them, join them. That's what Suncorp's doing. It's preparing to launch its own program and other banks are expected to follow. We expect uh, this time next year the majority of banks will offer some sort of instalment payment plan. Creating more competition and even more choice. Time will tell what this will mean for the banks but at the end of the day this is very important for the retailers. Tom Hartley, 7 News. Sport is next with Tim Watson and Tim Joel Selwood is fired up already this preseason. Mitch, the dust has barely settled on the Cats' finals exit, but the skipper has delivered a message for the doubters. Plus, the Geelong champion has dropped a huge hint on a big decision due at the Cattery this off-season. Also, the explanation behind the retirement call that shocked the footy world. Cox Plate controversy, a leading trainer at odds with racing officials. And an Aussie legend and former selector reveals how long before David Warner has to turn things around. Welcome back. This year's Cox Plate will go ahead shrouded in controversy after one of Melbourne's leading trainers had his fancy scratched at the last minute. Laura Spurway is at Mooney Valley and Laura, talk us through these sensational developments. Well, Tim, a day of drama in the fight for this trophy and tomorrow's $5 million Cox Plate after Kieran Ma, well, he's gone in six days from having two runners in the race to having none after Vets scratch gold trip earlier today. That's despite Stewart speaking with jockey Damien Oliver about the $12 chance, but it made little difference. And Ma, well, he's been left fuming by the decision. Under the watchful eye of Racing Victoria Vets, Gold Trip was assessed at Werribee's International Stable. An anxious Kieran Maher on hand as his Cox Plate hopes went on the line and were quickly dashed. They're very, very disappointing, fairly <laughs> confident as well that he's fit to race and, and going to race well. Gold Trip declared lame for the second time in two days. In a statement, Racing Victoria says six separate veterinarians were unanimous in their decision. Not enough to convince last year's Cox Plate winning trainer. The horse has passed all the scans. Uh, he's had no medical treatment at all. Charlie, my vet, has been here every day. He's very comfortable for the horse to race. It was only yesterday jockey Damien Oliver slammed stewards for not asking his opinion on the horse. I think Damien Oliver's um, views should have been heard. He's ridden the horse a couple of times now and said he felt really good. It leaves a field of nine runners for tomorrow's race, with Zaki still the one to beat. Zaki Sydney trainer Annabel Neesham completed a last-minute dash to Melbourne via private jet this morning. Meanwhile, jockey James McDonald was finishing up a week of quarantine alongside fellow hoop Hugh Bowman. Played a lot of golf. Um, we've tormented each other over, over the few days, but um, we're lucky enough we've got here now. We're very hopeful he loves the valley and gets on that forgiving surface and um, performs at, at his best. Laura Spurway, 7 News. Joel Selwood insists Geelong's ageing list isn't going anywhere as the Cats prepare to double down in their search for a premiership. Selwood has also declared he wants to hold on to the captaincy and hit back at those suggesting it's time he stepped down. On hand visiting retired racehorses today... <laughs> Joel Selwood isn't thinking about next year as his last and going out to pasture just yet. I probably should go into that thinking at some stage that it may be, but um, you know I'll go and enjoy it, um, get really fit. At 33, Selwood will be one of 14 cats 30 or older come next finals and knows the ageing list narrative is only getting louder. Yeah, well, 
it probably will because we're not getting any younger. But despite a preliminary final, Belting believes they're ready to contend again. We still think that we've got a really strong uh, list um, together at the moment that we'd like to you know, keep going for it and, and um, not, not only going but get there and, and you know, lift that cup up again. Selwood needs three games to take Stephen Kernahan's record for games captained and has no plans to hand over the reins despite external commentary. Understanding the club and being there for a long time, um, probably know where the club's at more than um, people on the outside that have their opinions too. So there will be a time, um, not just sure it's now. Selwood and Life Brit continuing their racing association this spring, visiting Fiona McIntyre's farm as part of Racing Victoria's Off the Track program. This year it's more about seeing what the racehorses do after the races for us. Mitch Cleary, 7 News. Still on AFL and Eastern Wood has revealed he's been contemplating retirement for six months. The 32-year-old had a year to run on his contract but wasn't prepared to fight for his spot after more hamstring setbacks throughout the season. I think it was about my 20th overall, so whilst the hamstrings were hanging in there, uh, I've athletically declined. and always said to myself I'd rather go out slightly early than, than slightly too late. The 2016 Premiership captain finishes on 188 games. Aussie cricket legend and former selector Greg Chappell says David Warner should hold his place for Australia's opening T20 World Cup clash, but time is running out to turn things around. I think they'd be loath to leave him out at, at this stage. He's got a couple of games to, to get himself in, into gear, depending on what the team's doing. If they're winning, they might be prepared to give him a bit longer. The Aussies take on South Africa on Saturday night. The 76ers have threatened to drag out the Ben Simmons saga for the entire four years left on his contract. Simmons reported a back injury at training this morning, only to be passed fit by team medicos. The Aussie then ruled himself out of practice due to not being mentally ready to play. I'm kidding, I'm not. This can be four years. Right now, any sort of trade, which obviously Ben Simmons wants, the best thing we can do is get role players back. Um, that makes no sense. People should buckle in. This is going to go a long time. Meantime, Steph Curry produced 45 points as the Warriors held on against the Clippers by two points. Mitch, four years of speculation. I'm not sure about that. That sounds like a complete and utter mess. Yes, uh, it'll get sorted out at some stage, but there's a little bit of cat and mouse being played at the moment. And what about Eastern Wood? Were you surprised by that? Yeah, I was surprised by that, but it's been a great career, a mighty career, a very fine player for the Dogs. Indeed, and he knows his body better than anyone else, doesn't yes, he? Yes, and it has been letting him down on occasions, Mitch. Thank you, Tim. Jane is next with the forecast, and Jane, how does the weekend look? Well, Mitch, there's no more warmth, and we've got showers passing through. I'll have the very weekend weather details next. Hello again. We had a warm day with lots of sunshine earlier, but a cold change is rolling through and there's some wet weather out there too. Let's zoom out. The sunshine was slowly taken over by areas of cloud and under that we're seeing showers and thunderstorms develop. Now there is a line of them just in Melbourne's west near Ballarat. They are forming with a trough that is separating warm air to the east and cool air to the west. So now it is 25 in Yarrawonga, but 14 all through the southwest. In the city, we reached a top of 27. The cloud has thickened. Temperatures are falling with that trough. Now it is still up on 20 in Scoresby, 23 in Yarra Glen, but there's much colder air in the west and south, and that will be spreading right on through tonight. The radar shows that we've had a bit of activity so far, but there's bigger showers and thunderstorms that are over to our west. That's coming into Geelong and a risk in Melbourne in the next few hours. You can see that line there. Then steady rain begins later this evening. This burst of warmth is slowly coming to an end with that trough. A low should form overnight and sit off Gippsland, so there's a fair bit of wet weather to come too. The northwest of the state misses out, but the south and northeast should see at least 10 millimetres, falls up to 30 millimetres likely. This is overnight and tomorrow. And here's the chill. Maximum temperatures drop back down to the teens for most and just the low 20s in the far north. But we only have to wait until mid next week for the next burst of warmth and sunshine. Around the nation tomorrow, night in Brisbane, Sydney and Canberra, but that's ahead of the risk of late thunderstorms. Very wet in Hobart tomorrow, steady rain all day that continues on Sunday. A local morning shower in Adelaide, it's pleasant in Perth. 
to Victoria. Widespread showers in the south and lower north, tending to areas of rain through Gippsland. There's the risk of thunderstorms too, but it is mostly dry in the northwest. It is chilly or turning that way. There's snow developing in the Alps later. Closer in, steady rain clears around dawn, then tomorrow has lots of showers moving through, all the blue there on a chilly wind. Torquay only 15, scores be 16, the early rain, then passing showers should add up to 5 to 20 millimetres. The city is 17, lots of showers passing through during the day under mostly cloudy skies. To the eight-day outlook, there are showers on Sunday morning, but they dry up for the afternoon. So Sunday afternoon does seem to be the peak of the weekend, a mix of sunshine and some cloud, but it is only 15 degrees. As we go into Monday, cloud does return. There's the odd shower moving through, still just 15. On Tuesday, a cold start. We rise up to 21 in afternoon sunshine once that cloud clears during the morning. Here's our next spike of heat coming in on Wednesday. Sunshine rising back up to 27 degrees like we saw today. But there'll be some cloud later in. There's a chance of a shower at night. That clears for Thursday morning. We're 25. Then a big change later on Thursday with more storms and rain moving through. So then a cold start to next weekend. We are cooler all this weekend too at 17 tomorrow and expect lots of showers passing through after that rain around midnight tonight, Mitch. Midweek is getting the pick of the better weather at the <laughs> yes, moment. Yes, you need it? those days off, I think. Rearrange things. It's a real <laughs> cycle there. Thank you very much indeed, Jane. And that's the way it is this Friday, the 22nd of October. Thanks for your company. For now, from the 7 News team, good night.